Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and I am teaching a class in C++ using SDL right now, so I thought I'd show how to set it up just because I know that it can be convoluted. And uh, so, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So, first thing I'm going to do is download the SDL libraries. I could probably Google them, but I have the website here. Uh, libsdl, that's libsdl.org slash download dash 2.0.php so here there is the development libraries and what we're going to be working with uh, is this one right here because we're doing Visual Studio so uh, just click that to download it I'm going to save it let's open the containing folder and let's just open that guy up and there's an SDL uh, folder inside of there. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to grab this and here's our C drive. We're just going to drag it into the C drive. It'll get extracted there. And then we should have uh, this inside of our C drive, the SDL and then the version. So once we have that set up, we can start working with uh, Visual Studio. So inside of Visual Studio, we're going to go to New Project and when that dialog comes up, we're going to go down to C++, general, uh, empty project. I'm just going to save it to the desktop as my project. So when that gets set up, we're just going to include the libraries, set up the linker and everything else just to get uh, window rendering. So uh, we're going to go to project, go down to properties open up the configuration properties here select VC++ directories instead of the include directories we're gonna edit that I'm gonna hit that button hit this button go to C drive go into SDL2 go to include and hit select folder so this is the include directories as you can see here and we're also gonna do the library directories so same thing hit the arrow hit edit we're going to find the libraries folder it's in our C drive the SDL folder lib we're gonna be dealing with x86 not x uh, not 64-bit so just select that okay now instead of the linker go to input and additional dependencies hit that drop down hit edit and we should be able to do SDL 2.lib and SDL 2 main dot lib so that's SDL 2 lib and sdl2main.lib and lastly we're going to go to system and up here in the subsystem we're going to use the console subsystem console hit apply hit ok and if we tried to build this project we will get our succeeded and we needed to build it in order to create a debug directory so if we go into the solution explorer right click on my project not solution my project but my project Go to open folder in files explorer and in there you'll see a debug directory and what we're going to do is actually the debug directory we would care about is actually up a directory and this debug directory so go into there and what you're going to do is go to c drive sdl2 lib x86 find this stl2.dll and copy it in there so that we have a dll in there so now that it's set up like that, we're going to create our main file. So right click on source files, add new item. We're going to select the CP, yeah, C++ file and we're going to call it main.cpp. Now let me zoom in the text a little bit. So uh, let's just create a quick event driven program uh, that opens a window and allows us to close it. So we're going to include sdl.h and we're also going to include S, uh, stdio.h we're going to make a const int uh, screen width 720 const int screen height and I'm going to set that to 480 uh, now we're going to make uh, two functions bool initialize I-N-I-T-I-L if I could spell initialize correctly I'm not sure if I did void close 
Uh, then we're going to make an SDL window, not a capital window, window pointer window equals null. I'll explain what these do in a moment. Uh, we're going to use the C++ null, not the C sharp null. Uh, SDL underscore surface pointer screen equals null. We're going to do int main and our arguments are going to be int uh, arg c and char star args array, so it's a string of arguments that we have. Uh, we're going to fill out this in just a moment. We're just going to go down and uh, set up our initialize and our close function, so bool, t-i-a-l-i-z-e. Let's make sure I spelled that the same. Sweet. Okay, so initialize. Uh, we're going to try to initialize uh, SDL, so we say if SDL underscore I-N-I-T, which is a built-in function, and then we're going to pass the flag SDL init video. It's less than zero. This is a C library, so uh, there's going to be a lot of this and a lot of flags. So print f. This, this means that there was a problem loading it, so SDL could not be initialized. Uh, then we can print out the SDL error, so SDL error uh, mod s. Add a new line for our console output, SDL underscore git error. And then return false. So we return false because uh, this initialize should only return true if we've successfully initialized. So let's continue. We're going to uh, create a window. So window equals SDL create window my SDL game. We're going to uh, set its position to undefined. So SDL window pause uh, undefined. And we're going to do that twice. So I'm going to just copy, paste. So this is the start x position, the start y position. We could put in numbers for those. Uh, now we're going to do the width and the height. So screen width, uh, screen height, and SDL window shown. There we go. That's the type of window. We can do like headless and stuff like that there too. So if window is equal to null, meaning that it was not set up properly, then we're going to say print f uh, window could not be created. SDL error mod s add a new line. SDL underscore git error same function and return false. Uh, otherwise, we're going to set up the screen. So screen equals SDL underscore git window surface window. And return true. So it's only going to hit this point if it didn't return false on these other ones. And now we're going to create close, which is just going to uh, go and clean up all of those uh, just the uh, window and uh, clean out the libraries and destroy them. So void close and we're going to say uh, sdl underscore destroy window and we're going to pass in the window and then we're going to say window equals null so we're just going to clear it out and then sdl underscore quit just the method to close out all of sdl so now that we have that set up, we can finish up our main, and I can go through and explain all of this. So instead of the main, we're going to say if not initialize. So we're going to try to initialize, and if we cannot, we're going to print f could not initialize. And then let's add a new line. Else, I guess rather than doing a bunch of if else's, I can put this in a code block, do return. All right, bool exit equals false. We're going to use this for our infinite loop. Uh, SDL event E. So we're going to create uh, event structure. 
right? Yeah. No, this is a union. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to do u int 32 bg color equals sdl map rgb. We're going to, this is basically going to be the background color, if you didn't guess it, that we're going to be using, uh, which we're just going to make black. So screen format is what we're going to use for the uh, format. And then we're going to do just RGB. So RGB 000 is going to make it black. While not exit, we're going to do some fun stuff here. Uh, when we do exit, we're just going to close. We're going to call our close function to clear out everything and return zero for our main. Uh, so now that we have set up this, we're going to go through and pop out the events. So while SDL, SDL underscore poll event, and we're going to reference E is not equal to zero. Then we're going to do if E.type is equal to SDL underscore quit, or E.key.key symbol dot symbol is equal to SDLK, no, SDLK underscore escape. Then we're going to say exit equals true. So now inside of that, we're going to do SDL underscore fill rect screen null and BG color. Lastly, SDL underscore update uh, window surface and window. If all is correct, I should be able to run this. Let's find out. Nope, not all is correct. SDL main function must return a value. Oh, return negative one. All right, so we have our window. We can move it around. It has our title. We have our console window. I can close it with the X. And if I press escape, I should be able to close it as well. All right, so now that we have a fully functional window, I can explain what's going on here. Uh, we include the SDL libraries mainly. We have the, we set up a couple constants for how large the screen is. So if I change this to something like 800, you'll notice that the screen will change in width. Um, we have our function prototypes here for initialize and close. We have the main window that's going to be used for rendering. We have screen, which is an SDL surface, which you could think of as like a texture. And we're going to use it as the background. Uh, we then, instead of the main, we call initialize. So let's jump down to initialize. Instead of initialize, we're calling SDL init, and we're passing the flag SDL init video, which is just going to initialize video. I mean, that's what it sounds like. Uh, so that is kind of obvious. Uh, we're going to create our window. And the SDL create window function, the first argument is the title of the window. This is what we saw in the title bar. Uh, if I were to run it, it's going to say SDL my, uh, my SDL game up here. The first argument here is the X position and the Y position. So if I change this to 15 and 15 and ran this, it's going to come up here in the top left corner. So uh, by using SDL window pause undefined, it's just going to try and center it. So you can see it's centered. The next argument is the width of the screen and then the height of the screen. Of course, if I change this to like 900, I'm explicitly changing the window width here. And then this is the SDL window shown. There's other things like SDL underscore window underscore borderless. That one's pretty cool. So if I run this, we're not going to have any borders. Uh, of course, I can't press the X on that one. I have to press escape. So I'm going to go back to shown. Uh, if the window is null, meaning that we've tried to create a window and nothing happened, this function failed, something's wrong with our uh, with drivers or something, uh, we're going to print out the error to the console. Um, and uh, if everything is good, we're going to assign the screen to the get window screen, uh, surface. So we're getting the window surface, the background, everything uh, that's this interior area here, and we're assigning it to the screen. We're going to return true for the initialize. So once it has initialized, if it failed, we're just going to print out failed return out of the main. Uh, we're going to create an exit boolean, which we're just going to be used to control the infinite loop that we have in our program. And then we're going to make an SDL event E. This is basically the event stack. So every event that happened, every key press, every mouse click, every mouse move, all that stuff gets keyed up inside of this uh, event queue here, which we'll pop through as I'll explain in a minute. 
We create a background color. The SDL map RGB is a way of creating a color. We're using the screen format as a format and RG and B are here. And this is a 0 to 255 range. So if I do 255 here on the red, you'll notice the background will be red. Ooh, that's blinding. Uh, so while not exit, we're going to go through and do an event, uh, a while loop on this poll event. Poll event basically just means pop off an event. So it's popping off an event, and we're storing the event inside of E. That's why we're passing the, the memory address of E. So we're passing the reference of E so that E becomes whatever event is at the top of the queue. So uh, when we do that, we check what the type is of that event at the top of the queue. If it was the X button or if it was an escape, we're going to say exit is true. And we can check for all the other inputs inside of this while loop as well. So once it, we've pulled all the events and the event queue is empty, we come down to SDL fill rect. This is basically filling the background color. Uh, and if you want to render images, it would happen here. So to do, to do, ren uh, do other rendering here. Uh, and then we just update the window service and pass the window. So this infinite loop continues until we press escape or quit, and then it closes out SDL and returns zero. So that's how we can set up SDL uh, and C++ to get us started. If you have any questions, please let me know, um, and I will continue these as the class continues. So until next time, I'll see you later.